I know you are all as anxious as I am to see how all the pieces of this project come together as a single building, but there are a few things to consider before charging ahead with our glue brush. First, just a note about some tools. Uh, if you are trying to assemble uh, a building with clean 90 degree corners uh, as we are, I recommend uh, getting a second pair of hands or the next best thing like this set of uh, corner clamps. What I've got here is what I would describe as a dollar store version and there are much better ones out there but this is fine for me at the moment because I'm just trying to get a sense of how all the pieces will fit together. I've put some masking tapes uh, tape along the uh, clamps themselves just so I don't mark uh, or cause any marks on the uh, finished painted surfaces. Let's talk about the roof finally. Uh, as I mentioned in a uh, previous uh, video, I've selected this evergreen product um, to represent the prototype roofing system. Each package comes with uh, a 6 inch by 12 inch sheet like this and um, there are 23 grooves along the sheet uh, spaced at roughly two prototype feet apart. Each package comes with at least 25 of these uh, tiny and flexible uh, pieces of styrene that are a snug fit uh, into, the, uh, into the grooves. Now right, right away I see I'm going to have an issue here as we uh, obviously need several of these sheets uh, to butt together to one another to make the very long uh, roof uh, for our building. Uh, there's no groove right on the edge obviously so when I butt two pieces together um, I want to have one of these bits of styrene to act as a, as a rib and I don't want to have a, a, a gap so I'm either going to have to cut a scale foot off um, each piece that I'm butting together and then I'll, I'll have the, the ribs still at two, two feet apart or I butt them together as they are and I try and create a groove along the glue line um, that might look better because I won't be creating an artificial glue line um, but I'm not sure that that's the right thing to do because trying to scribe a glue uh, a groove along a glue line could um, cause the two pieces to come apart. Now if you're thinking that the nice square factory cut of the roof sections would be a great guide to align the front and sidewall sections, you'd be right. Uh, in fact, now is a good time to check that we've left enough space along the top edge of the front wall to where we placed the uh, O2O strips in the last video. Also a good time to confirm that the uh, roof thickness matches the lip created by the rib along the top side of the wall. Let's see if we can check this out. So, on the back side, if you recall, the walls have this rib that we've left along the inside of the roof. So, let's have a look. There we go. Seems to be a good fit. Nice and snug. Doesn't stick up. So that I think is going to work out quite well. Here's a close up. You can see how this is a smooth, flush fit right to the edge. And on this side as well, it's a smooth, flush fit. So once we get all the pieces together, it should look good. One of the things that uh, jumps right out at you when you put the, uh, the evergreen roof on the building uh, is that it's quite a, white, a bright white. Um, and this is prototypical for, for most roof systems. If you take a look at uh, roofs uh, on our Google Maps, uh, you see that most roofs are, are, are bright white to, uh, to reflect the heat of the sun. I thought I was getting uh, a bright white for the walls when I painted them. Certainly from the look of the cap on the spray can that I used, it should have been bright white, but it appears that when it goes on, it goes on as a, a warm white. 
Now, I don't mind the warm white again. Certainly, it works well against the uh, against the bright red, but I, I thought it was actually going to be something brighter. So, lessons learned: uh, always test your paints. Now, having done all this, I'm obviously not going to paint the walls again, but it raises the question: what to do about the roof? Do I leave it unpainted? And do I paint it? Uh, certainly, I have to have all the ribbing in place. Uh, before it's painted because you can't paint it after you've uh, you can't glue it after you've paint, painted it. Now Evergreen's raw styrene is um, quite a, a bright white and could be left unpainted. Uh, a light wash um, could be added to once the building is done overall to weather down a bit and tone it down a bit. Uh, it would still be a stark contrast to the off-white below um, I have to think about it. I'm not. I, I'm not totally opposed to it. I just didn't think I was going to have such a difference in color between the uh, the roof and the wall. Um, leaving it unpainted um, perhaps um, has some benefits. It would allow me to uh, wait to install the ribbing, uh, to glue in the ribbing later. I certainly have to do some cutting uh, of the of the roof sections to match the the length of roof required. The sheets are 12 inches long, but the roof sections are no more than eight inches long, so I certainly have to cut the base styrene pieces and the, the ribbing pieces to match. So uh, a lot of things to think about. Um, before we do anything though with the roof itself, we have to ensure that the superstructure uh, roof beams and columns are installed exactly at the right height to maintain a snug fit uh, underneath the roof so that the roof matches uh, the edges uh, both on the side walls and the front wall. In order to make sure that uh, our roof will fit snugly um, on top of our roof beams and match up with our side walls, we have to make sure we place these pieces exactly in the right place leaving just enough width here for the side wall and just enough width on the top for the roof. Now the first thing we've done is sand down the edges of the columns and beams so we have some exposed styrene to uh, glue to the back of the front wall. The next thing we need to do is make a little jig or two to make sure the columns are offset correctly and the beam is offset correct correctly. So what I've done here is I've used some scrap pieces of wall as a base and created these little jigs that will offset the column like this from the edge of the front wall and another blue is fresh another jig that will offset the beam from the edge of the roof like that so when we place them together like this we know we're going to get the roof beam and column placed just correctly so that the walls will butt flush and the roof will match up flush with the edge of the front wall. Here we have our first piece of infrastructure and wall assembly. Feel it's getting sturdier. And we can do a double check to see how well we did with locating our roof. You can see that fits just about perfectly. 
So our roof will be flush to the edge of the front wall. And if we take a look at our end wall, see that we left the correct amount. So we get a nice flush fit. Once the main columns and roof beams were glued in, I cut up the uh, evergreen quarter inch I-beams uh, to fit the four locations that we left gaps in the uh, splice bars. So we now have a very rigid uh, front wall, in fact, so much so that it can stand on its own. There we are. And for the rest of the column and roof beam connections, it's simply a matter of taking our roof panel holding it firmly against the upper lip here and with a bead of glue here and a bead of glue along the edge of the column placing it snug up against the roof holding it firm for a few seconds while the glue sets and all of our column beam sections will be in place. All right, now we have all of our roof and column superstructure elements glued to the sidewall. You see two of them here um, have been left gray um, because I'm going to see about having a removable roof panel here to look inside so that when you look inside you don't see the unpainted white styrene it'll just look like gray steel I haven't uh, glued this corner yet because it, this is just fresh off the production line so um, that'll be coming soon and then um, next step perhaps is to glue in the um, yellow crane rails uh, along the column toppings on each side. After that, we turn the whole unit around and we start on the back wall, which is a bit more complicated because it includes the extra um, pallet loading building that's only half height. So we have to cut our, our, our wall sections um, to different heights to make all that fit. But that's the next video.